On this episode, we look at a really new bioretention system as it's being watered. Hey everyone, and welcome back to ID Anthro. Now I wanted to film outside today because you know it's a nice day. Might as well, might as well make use of it. I was having trouble finding somewhere to set up the shot that wasn't too sunny. You know, it was nice and pleasant. And so, when you're having those dramas, sometimes you just have to turn to the people who know. And in my case, that is my lovely flock here. Uh, so I'm under this tree because my chickens are under this tree, and they know what's up when it comes to where to hang out in this yard. But Today's episode, today's episode is about being opportunistic and learning, uh, learning little things. So yesterday morning, of course I'm not publishing this video right away, so it's not yesterday morning, but yesterday morning I was wandering into work early, 6 a.m., got off the train and it was a really beautiful, uh, beautiful sunrise and I decided to stop and take this photograph. And I was like, wow, you know, looks really well. I'm really pleased this turned out quite nicely. It does pixelate a little bit when it gets big, but you know, turned out pretty nicely. And then I was like, hmm, okay, there's a few, uh, there's a few stormwater treatment systems just around the corner, King Street in Fortitude Valley. I'm gonna head around there, take a few photos because look, I, I never know when I'm going to need a photo in good lighting, like a nice photograph of a stormwater treatment system. So I'm just gonna head around, grab a few photos in this nice light. It had been raining, so I was like, you know, might be a little bit of water and stuff, maybe, maybe not. But uh, I'm gonna make the use of it, make the most of it. So I wandered around and indeed, I found a few little stormwater treatment systems, got a few nice shots like this one. But that's not what I'm here to talk about with this video. I'm here to talk about what I saw happen next. And that is, I was taking photographs of this system, but I was standing up on this little traffic island up here, or just in front of it. Like I was on the road, right? Stupid spot to, uh, to be standing, really. And I suddenly heard behind me quite a lot of noise. Kind of like, you know, trucky, watery, gushing kind of noise. And I was like, whoa, what the heck is that? I'm getting out of here. Jumped off the road, but then realized that I should really uh, get filming because uh, sorry, I'm going to turn off the sound on the computer because there was this truck out and about watering the bioretention systems. Now, not the most efficient way to water them uh, because there was a lot of water running down the curb and bypassing the systems, but they were out there and kind of broad scale spraying them. And I was like, wow, what a good opportunity to see how these systems operate in the real, in the real world. Because here's the thing, if you were like, I think it's great to get out in the real world, look at systems when they're operating. But it's really, really rare to be there at the moment it starts raining and to see the water come in. That video that I made not so long ago where I was out at that Brisbane City Council Creek filtration system was pure like good fortune that I was there the second the water started coming into it and I got lucky here again today. So filming it, you can see lots of water running down the curb. It's filling up pretty quickly. One thing I noticed here is the, uh, the grade at the base of the system isn't flat because it, uh, it ponded water more at the inlet end than the top end that you can see up around there. So it's ponding more water down here, less water up here. Uh, other things that I noticed looking at this particular system was these inlets are pretty small and a lot of water, I think there's a fair flow coming down the curb, but a lot of water's bypassing the system. Maybe not such an issue given that, you know, these things are trying to pick up smaller rainfall events, but I was a bit like, hmm, I wonder whether these should have had slightly bigger curb inlets, but nonetheless, I learned a bunch from filming this. So I stopped filming just there, and so that was at 6.24. So we got the timestamps here, right? 6.28, so I filled up a fair bit of water at 6.24. 6.28, I, or thereabouts, I grabbed the camera again, and there's far less water coming in now, and really, it's, uh, it's mainly ponded water in this kind of front third to front half of the system, and it's draining back down again pretty quickly. So I'm like, okay, this is cool. This system, I remember looking at this a while ago and wondering whether the, because there's a bit of house building going on around the site, or not house building, like apartment building. There was construction work going on around it. I was like, hmm, I wonder how, uh, I wonder how, by the way, please ignore the fact that you just saw I was barefoot. You should be wearing shoes while doing this. Uh, or you should be wearing whatever you feel is appropriate. Shoes are probably a sensible option. 
But anyway, I'd seen the systems in the past, wondered whether they might have a bit of clogging, but this system's just got wet from all this water and it's starting to drain down pretty quickly. I was like, okay, sweet, that's going really well. Let's see what we got in one of these other shots here. Again, you know, it's mainly just got water in this front bit. Like, okay, awesome. That's really cool. Then 6.30, the truck comes back for its second pass and I have some much more stable footage of it this time. So you can see here, it's spraying water onto the road. It's running off down the gutters. In a minute, we're about to get a big old inflow of water. We'll, uh, we'll just let the truck keep going. Not too long now. And we'll, uh, we'll move the shot. See, yeah, there we go. There's the first bit. It comes flying down and you can see it just with that velocity. So much of it's bypassing. But anyway, so the system this time around. So the first time around, it was dry. Even though it had rained a bit overnight, it was dry. And then the water came in, starts filling it up. This time around, when the second lot of water comes in, the system still already has some ponding in the front and we get even more come in and starts to fill it up. And this time around, the system fills significantly more. Let's skip forward a little and see what we can find here. Sorry about this here. Okay, we're now at the top of the system looking back down towards the inlet and you can see the water here. There we go, all rushing down the curb. Yeah, you can see how it's filling up much further into the system this time. And we'll let this, uh, we'll let this play out. Here, so lots of water gushing, 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 gushing. It's, I think it's fascinating watching how that inlet behaves. But that's just me. So anyway, there we go. Yeah, there we go. That's a beautiful shot. So, this is now 6.30. So, bear in mind, everything we've talked about here has happened so far in a six-minute window. Right? So then over the next few minutes, let's say it's roughly the next six or so, the system... Let's just check what we have here. Yep. The system starts to drain back down again. So it had... I'll run that again. It had been full, it had been filled up. Now it's kind of drained back to about halfway down. And then a couple of minutes later again, 6.38, I got these shots. And let's go with this one here, where you can see how high the water had ponded in this particular system and has already drained back down. This is only eight minutes after the truck started watering it. It didn't completely fill the system, but it's giving us a really good indication that this system's draining. What else I wanted to show you, or the other thing I wanted to show you, using better grammar, is, let's, sorry, got to do some skipping here, find the right spot. Yeah, here we go. So the other thing I looked at when it was draining well, is I made the, made the point to look around the pr entire perimeter, the interface between the filter media and the edge. So in this case, that metal edge, and then in this case, the back of the concrete curb, and then at this metal edge, and then this concrete edge on this side, made a point to look at them all really closely, much closer than I am in this video, and check that there was no like scour holes or anything like that. There's a little bit of one in this corner, but uh, just to make sure, there were my feet again. <laughs> I'm so safe. Just to make sure that there, were no, there was no short circuiting down the edge of the system. And once I checked this out, I didn't find any. I was like, okay, I'm pretty confident that we've got a pretty functional system here. And this is the benefit of being out there in the wet. So at 6.38, and then at 6.40, it's really drained back quite a bit. And we got this last shot here where there's just really water around the inlet. A bit, it extends up to about here, and that's, you know, and round about here, and that's it. And the rest of the water is drained away. And so I thought that was a really just a good example of the power of being out there to look at, look at stuff, see what we could see see what we could learn. So a few things that I picked up from this video is, I think these inlets are too small. Because what you gotta remember is these streetscape systems where you have the inlet from the curb, I'm just gonna find one of the earlier videos that demonstrates this better. One of these, <laughs> okay, one of these streetscape systems where you have the water come down the curb, you have the inlet, and then in a second we'll see the outlet down much smoother there, down here. In these particular systems, uh, I know how to do this. In these particular systems, the intent is that when water, in everything but an exceptionally big storm event, when water comes down the curb, you want it all to get into the system, it fills up the extended detention depth, and when it's full of water, 
it effectively acts as an impenetrable barrier and then stuff starts bypassing. And this system, because that curb cutout is a little bit small, means that, okay, there's a fair bit of water coming down here, but perhaps a little bit too much water is uh, bypassing too early and uh, the inlet itself is constraining things a little bit. Maybe, maybe not, It'd be interesting. I'd love to hear from the designer. If you're the designer of this and want to tell me, you know, was this deliberate? Is there something going on here that I haven't picked up? If you're, uh, if you're that person, by all means, get in touch. So I learned this. And then the last thing that I wanted to show is I then went, went into the office to start the day of work, but I happened to uh, stumble across by sheer chance some photographs of this area just only a few days ago. So I'm filming this, it's the 24th of June. There was a flood event, it was what, Saturday? Like the 20th, something to that effect. This is essentially the same area, like four days earlier. The system that I'm looking at, you can see how the road's coming down. This is uh, St. Paul's Terrace. And then King Street, you can just see it starting to turn up here. King Street, Sorry, I'm the wrong way round. This is even better. St. Paul's Terrace comes down here. You can see the sign, silly Jack. King Street turns up here. Like that gully pit we were just looking at is like right here. The system's here, it's underwater. So only four days earlier, this was subject to a really quite substantial flood event, would have seriously inundated the system. And this system's held up pretty well. And I found that really, really interesting. So look, I shall we get back to that photograph again. Oh, yeah, it's just out of shot because you can see in this shot we got all these chairs here but then we go back to this shot and they're just not quite showing up but they're really close anyway so that was that was that was it i just thought that you would find that interesting it was complete happen chance that i stumbled across that but uh yeah i hope that you enjoyed so did my chickens enjoy this episode well they're still all here a few of them have wandered away um, but, uh, but Chelsea here appears to be paying lots of attention and having some snacks. It's like a movie for chickens. But that's it. Thanks for tuning into this episode. If you like what you're seeing here at ID Anthro, there's a few ways that you can find us. You can find us online at www.idanthro.com. You can find us at Facebook at facebook.com slash You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on YouTube. And I've started playing around recently with an app called Beam. That's B E. ME. Now, if you Google that, you'll get some plus size uh, clothing stuff come up first, at least if you're Googling it from, uh, yeah, from Brisbane. Uh, but then if you scroll down a little bit, there's a video sharing app called Beam that's uh, kind of cool and we're playing around with it. So you can find us there. We are ID Anthro on Beam if you're interested. Sweet. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.